Okay, we're going to look at a challenging JEE advanced physics question from the 2016 exam. It's on rotational motion. So here's the question. Pause the video, give it a try, come back for the solutions. The first thing we always want to do when problem solving is take stock of the information that we're given. We want to sort out that information. Get our minds clear. If we do that, we're going to be much more confident and much better problem solvers. So a few things that you should notice. One would be all the answers are expressed in terms of A and omega. So everything has to end up being expressed in terms of A and omega. And we're given this expression, L equals the square root of 24 times A, which is going to help us with that. You also want to notice the axes of symmetry and the actual axis of rotation. So there's an axis of symmetry along here. And, and our disks are actually rotating about that same axis. So in this case here, our symmetry axis is the same as the rotation axis. So rotation about that axis is going to be very simple for us. Our other symmetry axis would be perpendicular. So this would be a symmetry axis. But if we consider, say, the center of mass of the system here, it's rotating about this axis Z here. So the actual rotation axis is different. And that means this angle here is going to be important because we're going to have to take components. So because the symmetry axis and the rotation axis have an angle theta between them, we'll have to take components when we start taking into account this particular rotation. And a third thing we should do is just write down the equations that we're likely to need in this problem. We see that we've got some disks rotating. Um, and, and generally, we can always think about the center of mass rotating. So we'd like to have our formulas for the moment of inertia of a point, which is m r squared, and the moment of inertia of a disk, which is a half m r squared. We need to know that angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. And we also need to know that the linear speed is equal to the angular speed times the radius of the motion. So now we've pretty much taken stock. Let's start answering the questions. So we're asked for a angular rotation about the z-axis here. And of course, the z-axis is not a symmetry axis. So what we're going to do is figure out the angular speed about this symmetry axis, and then we'll take a component. So that angular speed should be given by the linear speed divided by the radius. Now we know the angular speed is the same for all the points along the axis. They're all circling together in this horizontal circle. So we can, can choose any point along that axis. And a nice easy point here would be right here the math works out quite simply. So let's do that. So we need the linear speed. The linear speed depends on how fast the little disk is rotating and its radius. And we know how fast the little disk is rotating. It's got to be rotating at omega. And its radius is, of course, a. The r that we're interested in here is the r about the symmetry axis, which is this distance L. So let's express the L in terms of A, W, A, all over square root of 24 times A. And of course, the A's will cancel out, and we just get W over the square root of 24. But this here was about the symmetry axis. What we really need is 
that angular rotation about the z-axis. The z-axis here is the adjacent side to the angle, so this omega z will equal omega times the cosine of theta. Omega about the symmetry axis times the cosine of theta. So now we need to work out what that cos theta is. That's pretty simple if we look at this triangle here. So that triangle has a right angle here, length L here, length A here, angle theta here. So this side here would be L squared plus A squared. And the cosine of theta would be equal to adjacent side L divided by the hypotenuse. So let's put this all in terms of A's. Square root of 24 times A all over uh, 24 square root A squared plus A squared. This is going to come out to be 25 A squared on the bottom. So you'll get a 5A here and a square root of 24A here. A's will cancel out. So the cosine of theta turns out to equal to the square root of 24 over 5. So let's plug that in. Angular rotation about the symmetry axis was this, omega divided by the square root of 24 times the cosine, which was the square root of 24 divided by 5. Square root of 24 is cancel out, and we get omega divided by 5. So comparing, we can see that that first statement, A, is true. Let's do B now, and it's important to realize what they're really asking for when they ask for the magnitude of the angular momentum of the center of mass of the assembly about the point O. So here's the point O, and our center of mass would be somewhere in between this point and this point, but of course it's going to be closer to the heavier disk over here. Let's just call this length here LCM for the length from O to the center of mass. So we're concentrating that entire mass of the system, which has a mass of 5m, 4m plus 1m. And we're rotating it about the point O, which is to say we're rotating it about this axis of symmetry. So we want to figure out the angular momentum of a point of mass 5m rotating about that axis of symmetry. So in general, the angular momentum will equal the moment of inertia times the angular speed. The moment of inertia of a point is mr squared, but we're using the entire mass of 5m at a distance of lcm. It's the radius that gets squared times omega, and we worked out omega in the previous problem, the speed with which the outer portion of this disk moves, which will just be omega times a, divided by the distance from the axis of symmetry, which would be L. So we get this expression here. We need to work out that LCM. There's a fairly easy way to do it. If I divide the distance from here to here into five equal sections, like so, then the center of mass is going to have to be four times as far away from the lighter mass, which has one quarter of the mass, as from the larger mass, which has four times the mass. So our total length LCM is going to equal L, or we could say 5L over 5, plus 4 fifths of L, which would be 9 fifths times L. So let's put that in. 5M 9 fifths L 
all squared times omega a over l. Now we need to get rid of all the l's, recalling that l equals the square root of 24 times a. Do a little bit of cancellation. And we get 81 all over 5 times the square root of 24 times a squared times omega times m. And we can see here that does not equal 81 ma squared omega because of this factor of square root of 24 over 5, which is almost equal to 1. So that is incorrect. Okay, part C. And once again, it's essential to figure out exactly what's being asked. And that's an essential problem solving skill. Once you, you're clear about what's being asked, usually the problem solving is fairly easy. So in B, we were asked to know the angular momentum about the point O. Now we're imagining the angular momentum about the center of mass. So our two disks were rotating about O. However, the disks don't rotate about the center of mass because the center of mass is moving with them. So the only rotation we have to concern ourselves with is this omega here, this rotation about this axis. So in general, L is equal to I times omega. And in this particular case, the general omega is the omega of this problem. We'll have two contributions to the moment of inertia, both due to disks. So we'll have a half mR squared for the small disk and a half mR squared for the large disk. So for the small disk, it's just one half mass is m, radius is a. For the larger disk, still one half, but it's 4m and it's 2a as the radius that gets squared. So we get 1 half ma squared plus 16 halves ma squared times omega, which is 17 over 2 ma squared times omega. And you'll notice this is the same as this, and therefore answer C is correct. Let's try part D. Once again, it really comes down to understanding what's being asked in the problem. So what's going on here is we've got two distinct rotations going on. We've got the rotation of the disks about this axis here. And then we've got the rotation of the center of mass about this z-axis. Each of these rotations has its own angular momentum. And angular momentum is a vector. And we can add up angular momentum as a vector. In this particular case, we're just going to focus on the z components of the angular momentum. So most of the work for this problem has already been done in parts b and c. So for the rotation about this axis here, this line where it's solid, that's supposed to go in front of the axis. So when we use our right hand rule, our hand will kind of look like this, and this will be, will be the direction of the angular velocity, and in this case, the angular momentum as well. Let's do a vector to represent that. So that's going to be L from part C here. Now that L is going to have a Z component. So let's break this up into X and Y components. This would be LZ. So LZ is going to equal L times the opposite side, so the sine of theta. And you'll recall we drew this triangle earlier, theta A L, this came out to be 5A. So the sine of theta 
is going to be a divided by 5a, which is 1 fifth. So Lz is going to equal L times 1 fifth. And it's in the negative z direction. So let's remind ourselves that that was a negative. In part b here, we worked out the angular momentum of the center of mass about the axis z here. And we really just worked out the magnitude of that, but the direction is in the positive direction because the disks here are rotating into the page. So when we use our right hand and do our hand rule, our hand looks something like that, generally pointing upwards. So we've got one component in the positive direction, one component in the negative direction. And this is what it turned out to be. And that's a positive angular momentum. So the total angular momentum is going to equal that LZ from part B plus this LZ here, which is a negative, L times 1 fifth. So let's plug in our values here. 81 over 5 square root of 24 A squared omega times M minus L17 over 2 m a squared omega and times 1 fifth. So I'll take the m a squared omega out and I've got 81 over 5 square root of 24 minus 17 over 2 times 5, 17 over 10. So let's just do a quick check to see if it might be 55. Square root of 24 is almost 5, so 5 over 5 is about 1. This, this number here is going to be very close to 80, 81, something like that. This number here is 1.7. So 80 minus 1.7 does not equal 55. So D is a false statement. And this expression here represents that total angular momentum in the z direction of our system. So please take the time to like videos, to make comments, to ask questions, become a subscriber, sign up for notifications, become a member or a Patreon. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.